In this tutorial, we're going to look at toolpath saving. This is the final step of the process where we take toolpaths and we save them out to a file format that's compatible with your CNC machine. So let's go to file, close. And so to demonstrate toolpath saving, we're going to open an existing file and from the toolpath saving guide project folder, we're going to open widget 24 by 24. Okay, so here is a file that we've made earlier. So we're just going to use this icon here to switch from our design commands over to our toolpath commands. Okay, so we have five toolpaths in our list. We've got a pocket that uses a quarter inch end mill, an, a drill toolpath that uses a quarter inch end mill, a profile cutout that also uses a quarter inch end mill, and then we've got a profile that uses a 90 degree V bit along with a hatch profile that uses that same 90 degree V bit as well. Now it's always good to take advantage of our toolpath preview to see what your part will look like before you machine it. So let's go over into the preview toolpath section and we're just going to preview all of our toolpaths here. Okay, so once you're happy with what you can see in the preview for your project, then you can go on to save out the toolpath. So if we close out of here to access toolpath saving feature, you can come over to this icon here where we can save out our toolpaths. So we have various options at the top of the form and these control the toolpaths to be saved. But the most important option on the form is the machine and post processor that's selected here. And the post processor is what converts the x, y, z coordinates for the tool moves into a format that is suitable for a particular machine control. And the correct choice for this option will depend a lot on the control software of your machine. And so for demonstration purposes, I'm using my desktop machine here. You'll hopefully have configured your machine and you'll see your machine and the associated post processors listed for that machine here. And you can configure your machine right from within the machine configuration dialog that you can access here or using the drop down and using this option here to add post processors. If we click on that, that will open up the machine configuration management. So here we're able to add in a custom machine to our database where we can activate it. We can also look at installing an offline machine package. For example, if you downloaded that off uh, your Vinco account, um, and also you can look at searching online for your machine as well using this option here where you can search for your machine uh, where it will input in all of the details for the machine in these fields here and it will also include associated processors for that particular machine. And if you need to add in any additional post processors, you can use this plus icon here where you can search through the extensive list of post processors. So let's just cancel out over here. And so to learn more about machine configuration, please take a look at the machine configuration guide tutorial that you can find in the related videos section for this tutorial. So let's take a look at what we have so far. So at the moment we have selected toolpath selected here. And then working our way down, we can see toolpath to be saved is the pocket end mill quarter inch tool. And that's being pulled from this selected one here. If we click with each one, you'll see that the toolpath to be saved switches and changes according to the selected toolpath here. And so if we wanted to save out this toolpath as a single toolpath, we could simply then go ahead and save it. So I'm just going to select the post processor from my list. So I've got G code here. Now, if I wanted to have the appropriate post processor listed here as a default post processor, I can do that by going back into the machine configuration dialog. And then all I need to do is select the appropriate one or the most commonly used post processor. And then I can simply right click on that post processor and then use the option to set that to the default post processor and we'll just accept that and close out. That will always be in our list here at the top 
but should I want to access the other ones, I can still do so by using the drop down menu here. Now it's also worth noting here that if you haven't configured your machine and associated any post processors to your machine, you'll be prompted to do so when you open the Save Toolpath form. By having your software set up with a configured machine, the advantages are that it allows you to default to the last used post processor per machine, uh, better organize your post processors, and ultimately it just gives you more control over the version of the post processor that you use. And if you don't configure a machine here, then the software will resort to listing the entire post processor database for you to search for your post here. And then I'm going to use the save toolpath option. That's just going to open up a folder and then I could just simply go ahead and give that a name. So I'm just going to call this one pocket and then widget in there. And then we can simply press save and that will save that out as a dot tap file that I can then go ahead and send that over to my CNC machine. So if I open up that folder, we can see that it's been added here. Then I can take this and then send that over to the CNC to machine the pocket toolpath. Now, whenever we come to save our toolpaths, the location of the file save dialog depends largely on the file dialog default option, which can be found by going to edit and then in options. If we just scroll down over here, you'll see we've got file dialog default. And so at the moment, this option is set to global. And so with that set to global, then the location will be the last used location within the software. If we then set that to operation, uh, then that will use the last user location for saving the toolpaths. And then if we set that to job, uh, then that will use the directory containing the job. So in this case, the directory containing this widget 24 by 24 file that we've got here. So we're just going to set that back to global here and then we could go ahead and press OK. So let's have a look at some more options that we have. So we have an option here to output visible toolpaths to one file. Okay. And then the software is telling us there are no visible toolpaths to be saved. And that's because none of these toolpaths are currently visible. So if we checked the pocket toolpath along with the drill toolpath, and let's say the profile cutout toolpath, we can see that they're all listed here. And then we can go on to save those toolpaths. So let's just say we wanted to call these ones end mill. And then we could go ahead and press save. And then when we go ahead and open up that folder, you can see we have one file, which is an nmil.tap file. And we know that those three toolpaths, because they're using the same tool, are saved into one single file, which can be super handy when you're working with lots of toolpaths that use the same tool. So let's just minimize that there. So let's say we wanted to output the VBIT tools along with this as well. So we're going to switch on the visibility of these toolpaths. And now you'll see that the software is throwing an error. The visible toolpaths use different tools and the selected post processor does not support tool changing. So at this stage, if we had an automatic tool changer, we could look at switching our post processor to an ATC post processor. Or the other option we have is we could look at outputting all of the visible toolpaths to multiple files. And so if we go ahead and press save, we could just say, let's call this one widget. And then we'll go ahead and press save. And then when we come to open our folder, you'll see here now we have widget one pocket taken from this tool here, widget two drill, this one here. We've got widget three, profile cutout, text profile, and hatch profile. So it's respected the order that our toolpaths are within that tree. So let's just take these. I'm just going to take all of them. And we're just going to delete them for now. We're just going to minimize this. 
We also have the option here to group where possible. And so what the software will do is it will try to group toolpaths that use the same tools together. So if we check that option here and then use the save toolpath option, and again, we could just give that one a name. So we'll just call that one widget and then go ahead and press save. And if we pop up our folder, you'll see here, we've got widget one to three pocket. So that's telling us that it's took one, two and three. So it's all of these tools that use that quarter inch end mill and it's took pocket from the first tool in our list. And then we've got widget four to five text profile. So that's four and five here and it's took the text from that name there. So let's just close out here. So let's have a look at grouping toolpaths. So we can right click anywhere in this space here and we can look at creating an empty group. We could look at group invisible. So let's just undraw these options here and then we're just going to group visible all of the end mill so we can see that group there. We can look at just saving out our groups also. So here we can go to save the toolpath and then we can use this option here, selected toolpath and you'll see that it's listing all of those tools in our group. And when we go to save the toolpath, you'll see it will give that a name, group. So we can uh, give that uh, a little bit more of a name here. So we'll just call that group widget. And then we can press enter to accept that. And then you'll see that that's been added there. And so this group, um, toolpath file will contain all of those three toolpaths that are listed within that group. So let's just right click on this group. I'm just going to ungroup that group. So we're just going back to the original individual toolpaths within our list. And let's just switch on all of these toolpaths. We're going to go into the visible toolpaths to one file option here. And so the error that we're getting here, the one that we saw earlier, the visible toolpaths use different tools and the selected post processor does not support tool changing. Well, let's go and switch over to our post processor and we'll go to G code ATC. So here we are also displayed another error message and it's telling us that the pocket text profile both use tool number one, but the geometry of the tools are actually different. So here is where we need to go in and we can take a look at uh, those. So if we take a look, if we double click on those or if we close out even and if we just hover over, we can see the tool number for this tool is tool number one. So you can see that the bracket one close bracket and then end mill 0.25. And then for the text one, you'll also see it's tool number one. So in order for us to take advantage of the automatic tool changer, we need to ensure that our tools are numbered appropriately. If they're numbered the same, we're going to get this error message. So if we just jump into this toolpath here, and then if we use the edit option and we come over here and we just switch that tool number to number two and then press OK, and we'll go into this one as well. And then we'll just switch that to number two also then go ahead and press OK and press Calculate. And then we close out of the preview toolpath form. If we just hover over our profile tool here, you'll see now it's got brackets two and brackets two here. So now with all of those toolpaths selected, if we go into the save toolpath option and then we go ahead and we save visible toolpaths to one file, you'll see that all of those toolpaths are listed without any errors here using our G-Code ATC post. We can simply go ahead and save that toolpath and we can simply just call that one widget 24 by 24 toolpath, save that out and that will add that into our folder where we can then go ahead and send that over to our machine that uses the ATC to create all of those toolpaths. And so there are two further options that we have in the save toolpaths form and that is to output tiled toolpaths and you can learn more about tiled toolpaths in the tiling tutorials that will relate to in the related videos section for this video. 
You also have the option to add side to toolpath name. And so if you're working in a two sided job, then we can attach the top or the bottom side to the name of your toolpath so you know which toolpaths are the top and which toolpaths are the bottom. And to learn more about this, please take a look at the introduction to two sided machining tutorial. Again, we'll relate you to this video in the related videos section for this tutorial. So that completes this overview of saving toolpaths in the software. Thank you for watching.